Okay, we're going to be looking at problem number 16 on page uh, 493 from chapter 9. This is asking us to actually construct a confidence interval um, based on uh, some proportions here. So the first one it wants is a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of college freshmen who carry a credit card balance. Now, what I have here is that it looks like the proportion of students for freshmen uh, the estimated is 0.37 is my estimate and then my sample size is 1000 and I want to create a confidence interval so I basically had a sample of size 1000 that estimated it my proportion as 0.37 and I'm trying to get a confidence interval now, uh, it's important to know the level of confidence. So the level of confidence it wants today is a 90% confidence interval. So what I could do to get this value is I could uh, sketch what a distribution looks like. I could say my middle 90% would be roughly here. So if there's 0.9 in the middle, that means there's a total of 0.1 in both tails, so there's 0 0.05 in each tail. 0.05%. So now I can reach for the calculator. I can do in uh, distribution inverse normal of 0 0.05 and that gives me a value of negative 1.645. Should be getting familiar already. So that gives me a critical Z value that's going to cut off that middle um, 90% of 1.645. Now, once I have that, I can look at the formula for the confidence interval. The general formula for any confidence interval is, as always, your statistic plus or minus your critical value times the standard deviation of your statistic. In this particular case, my specific statistic is p hat. For uh, proportions, my critical value is Z star, and the standard deviation of a sample proportion is equal to P times 1 minus P over N. Now, the issue is, a lot of times we do not have, when we're creating a confidence interval, an actual, an actual population parameter. In fact, it's very rare to. Usually what we have is just a um, sample statistic. Um, in rare cases, you may actually uh, have some past data that would give you a better estimate of what you think the population uh, proportion is, but in most cases, such as this one, we're going to actually have to replace those values of P with P hat because we don't have any clue what the population parameter is, we just have what our sample statistic is. So that's the best that we can do. Now. Once we have gone this far, the uh, statistic it gives us is 0.37, so I'm just going to substitute into this formula. 0.37 plus or minus, my critical value was 1.645, square root of, once again, this is 0.37, is the best estimate I have. Then uh, 0.63. And then my sample size in this case was 1,000. Now at this point, I'm going to reach for the calculator. I'm going to show you how I like to type these in. How I type them in is I start with just the margin of error. Um, well, sometimes I will start with um, the actual square root itself. So I can start with the square root of point, um, 0.37. times 0.63 divided by a, a thousand and the advantage to this is this is actually telling me that number there the 0 0.01 is the standard deviation of the sample proportion so it is going to be denoted like this and that in context just basically means that you would expect uh, that if you did different samples of size 1,000 from this particular population, it would be perfectly usual, perfectly expected to be off by about one and a half percentage points. 
So that is your standard deviation of what your population proportion is. Now, to go from that to a margin of error, what I do is I take that value and I multiply it by the critical value. So, multiplying it by the point 1.645, this will give me my margin of error. The margin of error looks at the value of your uh, standard deviation of your sample proportion and um, your level of confidence in its associated um, Z critical value to come up with how much you will report your margin of error at. So basically when you report your uh, statistic you're going to give yourself plus or minus 2.5 percent or plus or minus 0 0.025. So one way you will see a confidence interval written is you will see it written as 0 0.37 plus or minus um, 0 0.025 and maybe even an additional decimal one. And that is one way you'll see it written, and that just tells you, it allows you to very quickly identify your point estimate of 0 0.37 and your margin of error of 0 0.0251. Another way you'll see confidence intervals written, though, is an in interval notation. So to do interval notation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add and subtract my margin of error to, act, to my actual point estimate. So I'm going to take my 0.37 and add that number there. And also I'm going to do my 0.37 and subtract that same value. And that will show you this interval estimate. And you'll uh, just write it that way. And basically this notation is just telling you that p hat lies somewhere between uh, 0.3449 and 0.3951. Now, even with a confidence interval, we cannot be completely certain that the true uh, population um, parameter, the true proportion of college freshmen, is between this 34.4 and 39.5 percent, but we can be 90 percent confident that this is true. So, uh, we're going to talk just a second about how to interpret a confidence interval like that in just a second interpret the confidence interval, we just say that we are 90% confident that the true proportion of college freshmen who carry a credit card balance from month to month is between uh, these two values. We always use appropriate context of the problem. We always identify our percent of confidence we have, and we always put our actual values in the context of the problem with appropriate units and with proportions. It's really easy to do units with means uh, you would have to indicate whether it was seconds or whatnot. Now, a lot of times we will also um, be asked to interpret the confidence level of 90%. So the way we would do that is we would say a confidence level of 90% indicates that with us that if a large number of uh, random samples of size, in this case, 1,000 are collected, the method used would capture the true population proportion ninety percent of the time. So this is saying if you are over and over and over again repeating the same method going out taking different random samples of this same size that the methodology we're using is going to capture the true population proportion 90% of the time. Now, what you cannot say, and this is very important to realize, what you cannot say is you cannot say that I believe that for this particular interval it captured the true proportion. I don't have a clue. It could know uh, whether this one particular interval has the true population proportion or not. My confidence is in the method that I use. 
Uh, so always make sure you understand when you're talking about confidence intervals, it's confidence in a particular methodology, not in one particular interview. It could be that you got the strangest group of students ever when you interviewed this time, and you just had uh, freshmen who were running up credit cards like nobody's business, and your uh, point estimate of 0.37 was so high that even doing the confidence interval, you failed to capture the true mean. It's also possible you randomly captured a group that had a very low population proportion, and there was no way to know. Uh, basically, uh, graphically, what you can do is you can look at um, something like this and saying that graphically, I have a sampling distribution, and you're assuming that your population distribution is located where your sample is. So you're basically saying, hey, I'm assuming this, center, this thing is centered around my point, 0 0.37, but I'm not entirely sure that it is. So based on my sample size, I'm willing to say that the true proportion could be anywhere between here and here. But it's entirely possible that the true population was way off. It could have been centered someplace very differently, and you just missed the, popu the true population proportion was way over here and you just missed it by a mile because you just had a strange sample. So it could be that a true sampling distribution of p-hat was over here and you just kind of missed it totally based on the fact that your sample was one of the ones that was way out here in the tail of the original distribution. So if you just by dumb luck get something that's far away, even having a 95% um, con confidence interval is not going to get you close enough. On the other hand, if you were off by just a, uh, by a little bit, like if your distribution would have looked, your true sampling distribution of p-hat would have looked something like that, and this is our estimate based on our uh, sample proportion, you can see that with our 90% confidence interval, if I'm willing to say, hey, based on me being 90% confident, I'm going to say it could be anywhere between here and here in this 90% of my data, then I did just barely capture the true population proportion value, uh, even though I was way out here in the tail of my, relatively far out in the tail of my original distribution. And that's the point of using a confidence interval. It increases the chance that you capture uh, that unknown population parameter.